all right you guys what is good we are um back with another podcast so this is something that um i literally had no idea was taking place until it actually did take place um and once i found out about it i was just kind of like man like this is incredible this is very much photo and video related um some of the things they're doing are obviously pushing extreme boundaries and what i'm talking about when i say this is the recent um rover drop on mars um the rover is called uh, perseverance um i'm sure a lot of you might have actually heard about it already or even researched a lot of it um but i figured that was a relevant topic to you know, talk about today because it's obviously something that's dominating headlines and it's you know obviously very much photo and video related again but um to uh go over some you know brief things about it some core things obviously like i said it is called the perseverance um it was launched in july and august i don't know what that means but that's the information that kept coming up i don't know if it was launched in two phases or it was initially launched and something happened i mean i don't i don't know but that's just the info that i keep receiving and keep reading it was launched from cape canaveral or cape canaveral air force station in Florida um, it took months to get there it obviously just landed it landed in February uh, February 18th specifically of 2021 in a river Delta in call me out if I'm saying this wrong but the Jazeera crater um, this thing I mean that's a total of From July to February, I mean, you're talking, man, I mean, you're pushing over half a year at that point. But um, some of the uh, key points that they're trying to accomplish, and I'm reading this off a PDF on the um, NASA.gov website. Uh, They are wanting to explore geologically diverse sites, assess ancient... um, possibly you know obviously former signs of life essentially um they really are trying to push um studying rocks and this camera that they have called the um mass cam z like this thing essentially is designed to have a crazy level of zoom technology and able to um almost like identify rocks from like football field lengths away um i mean the technology that went into this is crazy i'll talk about that a little bit later but um i mean obviously they're also going to gather rock and soil samples too um and it's a lot of this is is new technology so it's it's going to be tested for um future use and the potential of human exploration which is crazy um so the key component and the most exciting thing for us photographers is the uh mass cam z i mean this thing is it's it's designed to produce 3d stereoscopic images like it can zoom focus take photos video um the transfer rates are obviously like extremely slow and it's it takes so long to get high quality data from you know mars to uh earth for them to put these things together but this thing i mean it literally looks like a cannon this this thing is wild um and there's like nasa has a photo of it on their website and it's like they have it next to a pocket knife for scale and this thing it's i mean this thing it's, it, it literally looks like it's almost like a rocket launcher this thing is no joke and getting into 
its specs. This thing is it tra the data transfer is of 148 megabits per. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in pronouncing this, but Sol. Uh, apparently, that's a lunar day on Mars. So 148 megabits per day, which is incredibly slow. But it is what it is, and that's. I don't think you're expecting much more than that coming from literal space. <laughs> um, the quality is, it's similar to that of a consumer digital. It's like two megapixels, which is not good, but I assume that's relative towards um, transferring things all the way from Mars to Earth. You can't, I mean, you can't really have massive file sizes because that would probably take literal years to get like 4K data. Um, the image size is 16 by 100, 1600 by 1200 pixels. It literally, it's it's essentially designed to, like the zoom is, is what seems, it's, seems like it's the main feature. I mean, this thing is like, it's, Use, it's being used to detect water and soil textures. Um, it's it's main eyesight essentially. There's multiple cameras on this thing. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, I mean, nine engineering cameras, seven science cameras, and eight entry, descent, and landing cameras. Or yeah, not. Yeah, 23 total cameras. So this thing is just got bodies and glass all over the place. But the reason that I wanted to talk about this thing is because, I mean, as a kid, this was literally what I would nerd out about in elementary school. I would literally hit the library and I would study astronomy for like days. I would just buy, I would just take home books after book after book after book and just for days just submerge myself in astronomy. And I remember as a kid, I would love um, specifically um, Neptune because of its color. I felt like it was the most, you know, aesthetically pleasing planet to look at. And, um, it was just mind blowing to me the fact that this planet is gas. I mean, it's like it's it doesn't even possess. I, again, correct me if I'm wrong. And this has been so many years since I've you know gone in depth with astronomy. But this thing, I don't even believe po possesses a like solid, you know, rock uh, crust or core at all. It's just pure gas. I don't know if something can literally just fall from fall through it from the top to bottom but you know when I learned that it was I mean that was just mind-blowing to me and just like every every planet I guess at that point there was nine RIP to uh to Pluto but um it's just like everything just blew my mind in some way I mean like I remember reading about um, Venus and basically all the wild storms on that planet and you know just learning that like humans i think wouldn't even survive more than like a mere couple seconds taking in like the gas and everything from its atmosphere that was all just wild to me and um i think like mercury and essentially how it's just like i mean there's no atmosphere so you literally just fry immediately this was all just crazy to me at the time. I'm in elementary school, so, you know, bringing in all this new info and just learning all these new things was mind-blowing. But to um to go back to this exploration um specifically there's, you know, some of these other cameras, there's a um there's another one called the uh, SuperCam, and according to uh, NASA's PDF, this is an instrument that can provide imaging, chemical composition analysis, and mineralogy at a distance. So it kind of seems like it's doing similar things to what the MassCam kind of is, just not as maybe in-depth. It might be more or less like a backup kind of. Um, 
there is oh yeah the size and dimensions on this thing it says it's about 10 feet long nine feet wide and seven feet tall so this thing is essentially a small <laughs> it's a small tank really um it's about 278 pounds and there's there's also um other rovers currently on mars another one that it's actually mentioning mentioning right here in this pdf is the uh curiosity which you know that's conveniently named but um it's um it's also a lot of these cameras that are on um on this rover are you know new relatively new technology and a lot of you know some of the other components too like um, the mechanical arms and wheels and whatnot a lot of this is brand new so this is almost just like a um, a test in some ways to test out this technology and see how it works and potentially utilize it for you know years to come in this uh, PDF specifically it says it will test new technology for future robotic and human missions to the red planet uh, that includes an autopilot for avoiding hazards. Um, where they get like Tesla to sponsor this or something. <laughs> um, descent and landing instrumentation. Um, a navigation system. Which will allow the rover to drive faster in uh, challenging terrain. That's crazy. I'm trying to see video of this thing ramping uh, mountains on Mars. But, um, yeah, this thing, I mean, it's, it's just like the technology and the things you can read about this can just go on for days. I mean, this is just, it's so mind blowing. Um, but again, the most important thing to me is, is the video. Like I was, I was pretty interested in learning about the, you know, how the two megapixels is like obviously camera i mean the ones i shoot are i've shot cameras anything from you know 18 to 24 and then maybe up to like 36 megapixels on the high end so like for me hearing that i'm like, like what is this this is like shooting with a potato and then upon reading more and more i'm understanding like that's really rel the two megapixels is relative to the fact that the you know the higher megapixel count the higher um the 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 more data that's going to need to be transferred so i mean i you know completely makes sense now to tie two and two together but i um i was very interested to learn that and then it it's um the aperture <laughs> The, uh, the aperture of this thing, it's F7 at the wide end and F10 at the telephoto end. And, um, I mean, that that's not a surprise. That, that makes total sense to me. You're, you know, you're shooting, like, when you're trying to get clear images and you're trying to get things that, you know, everything's in focus. You don't, like, F7 to F10, like, everything's going to be in focus at that point. And that's obviously what you want, like, you're whole point is to examine uh the landscape and you know rocks and whatnot and then um relative to the the zoom the zoom is 26 to 110 which is kind of odd i don't know exactly why they did that i mean i would think I, you know, I, I just, I'm surprised that it's that, I mean, to us photographers on like a normal day, 26 to 110, that's a pretty wide range, but like you would think that to do something to this magnitude, that would be a lot larger than that. It would, I mean, it might be relative towards, um, to weight and functionality. Cause like, I mean, this thing basically from the inside out the way that this lens operates had to be completely redesigned because in normal cameras i mean it's the the zoom mechanism operates with 
um, like oil and lubrication. And with this, I, my understanding is that the zoom essentially goes in and out like along like guide rails because with this thing potentially spending um, two, I believe it's two years. They want to they want to put this thing up there for two years and actively use it for two years at the least. Um, that they didn't want to take the chance of this thing potentially, you know, the the lubrication essentially running dry and the oils running dry, so they put it on like a rail mechanism. Um, and I'm I'm not sure if they had to keep things more on the smaller and lighter side due to due to that or not oh and in relevance to the um the main improvements over that of the other rover that's that's on mars right now the curiosity that actually can't even take color images that's straight black and white which obviously observing colors um i i would assume that colors have a direct impact and are very insightful when it comes to studying minerals and and you know what these rocks possess so that's obviously massive they also have a wider field of view which again also massive you know you're capturing more detail in those images a wider field of view um which is gonna like you know better allow you to understand and study the uh the landscapes and uh, another massive thing is they have more resolution it's saying so obviously again that's that's providing better detail better clarity you're able to study things to essentially a very small level and that's obviously going to be massive when it comes to these minerals yeah, this is just something that I kind of just wanted to go over and really what I want to do is I, I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys think about this. You know, do you do you study, um, you know, or do you pay attention to anything as far as astronomy goes at all? You know, maybe you don't care about Mars, but do you care about any other planets? Do you study, um, you know, anything relative to maybe not even anything in the solar system maybe you you know you're going broader than that maybe you're studying constellations maybe you're studying um you know black holes but a lot of this hat like again a lot of this has to do with more for me than just the you know ex what's going on here this meant a lot to me since i was a little kid so when i heard about this I wanted to talk about it because it's relative to photography and you know this obviously is massive towards the photography community hence why um petapixel petapixel potato potato um you know they've been putting out a pretty significant amount of articles on this and obviously the reason for that is because again you know breakthrough technology and it's very relevant to the photo and video community but for me, this was about, um, you know, speaking on this, it was about personal um, preference too with, you know, just my draw towards astronomy and everything else. And I'm, I'm curious to, to hear and to speak with you guys about what you guys think about this and what, what you think, you know, cameras and, you know, photo and video the impact that it's going to have in you know future exploration whether it be the moon you know i don't whether it be you know dropping a rover if we can get one on venus or or mercury or anything of that nature i'm, I'm curious to to hear what your guys you know predictions are what you guys are hopeful for with photography not just being a you know pastime or a hobby or something you know art like i mean this is literally turning our art into a a tool that you know has massive impact i mean a lot of these articles that i've been reading are talking about um you know they're they're utilizing this for 
potentially the ability to inhabit this this planet and the first step to that is obviously getting somebody on Mars which one step at a time but that's that's what a lot of this means to NASA specifically is getting you know testing everything out and trial and error to get humans onto Mars at some point from initially a study level and then potentially a habitable level because Earth's not gonna last forever guys um, but yeah let me uh, let me know what you guys think I'm curious to to hear about all this your thoughts on you know space what this means for us as humans what this means for the photo and video community um, where you think we might go next with everything I'm curious to hear all, about all that um, you know drop that all in the comments send me emails comments um, messages whatever you prefer let's talk about space you already know I love it and I'm a nerd for it I just admitted one of my major uh, my major uh, nerd aspects of how my brain operates but um all right y'all i'll talk to you guys later